Hello everyone. So we are in the series of uh, best practices in Pega. So as part of this, we are today we are going to discuss about the data transform best practices and some of the database and data table and uh, decision tree and decision table. Okay. So in that the very first thing is in the data transform we will be going one by one. So in this enable class, enable call super class data transform checks only if you have a data transform with the same name in the class inheritance tree. Okay, so doing so avoids the overhead of looking up to the parent class. That means I have one data transform. Okay, let's see an example. So for example, I have this PY default data transform. Where exactly is having this one? This is there in the class of request approval. You see in the PEGA samples, request approval work and again request approval. Okay, in this class, we have the PY default. And if you see that, this is the request approval child class. And in the parent class, we don't have any rule. Okay, there is no data transform. Okay, there is no PY default or any other rule. So in that case, here when you are creating the data transform, because of selecting this call super class data transform, there is no use. So in general, I hope you all know that. So what is the purpose of this call super class data transform? It is going to first execute the data transform, which is there in the parent class. So that means on the work class, and then it is going to execute the data transform in the current class. So which is the request approval. Okay, so if you are clearly know that, so there is no data transform in the parent class, which it will not be exec executed. So then there is no point of selecting this checkbox. So deselect that. So by selecting this checkbox, unnecessarily it will go, the PEGA application will go and verify even in the PEGA samples class, request approval class, work class, and then it is going to execute the request approval class. Okay, so as this data transform is not available in any of these parent classes, so you just deselect this one. So it is going to save the performance of the application. So it may look like this is very minor, but finally all these minor, minor executions will impact the uh, executions of the application performance. So always deselect this call super class data transform checkbox. Okay. And the next one to improve readability, avoid using append current instead consider using the append and map. Okay. So here always try to use the append and map to method instead of the append to and current. Okay. So current means again, we will be using the current syntax to refer the current page. So instead of that, it is better to use append and map to. Okay. Always try to use the append and map to and then set the values accordingly. Okay. So that is one thing. And uh, third one, ensure that data transform don't use the px execute an activity function to call an activity. So evaluate whether the call activity can be transformed to a data transform. That means, as you know that from the data transform we call, we can execute the activity through px execute an activity function. Okay. But first of all, try to find if that activity can be converted to the data transform. If you can convert into the data transform, so just to create the data transform and instead of calling the execute an activity function. And don't use more than five levels of the nested steps in the data transform. Okay, that means for example, I have a data transform here. So in this data transform, in this data transform, if you see the third step here, okay, I'm looping it. Okay, for each page in, Okay, for each page in. So here I'm, I'll be referring the page list property. And so in case if to any reason, if you need to have it multi-level, okay, limit it to the up to the five levels. Okay, limit it up to the five levels. Don't go beyond five levels. Don't go, don't add inner. Okay, don't add inner. Okay, loops again. So like by adding this again, it is going to be become the burden of it. Okay, it is going to become the burden and it is going to hugely impact the performance of the application. 
so always limit executing inner loops up to the five levels okay inner loops up to the five level so this is one level this is second level this is third fourth and fifth maximum you can add up to the five levels with any reason if required okay so don't use more than five levels of nested steps in the data transform and consider modular modularizing a data transform so that it does not require more than 20 steps this improves reusability and unit level quality okay and even with any region if required to add more number of the steps try to limit up to the 20 levels so here this data transform is having 12 okay 12 steps are there so like that maximum limit to the 20 and you may ask that okay in case if required more than 20 steps what we can do so create again separate data transform and then call that data transform from here okay so as you know that apply data transform and then you can refer that data transform here okay so you can refer that data transform here so apply data transform so here you can refer this data transform which you want to execute so like that for every 20 steps you create one data transform and then add it into the main or parent data transform so that will be helpful and even that makes reusability also why because for those 20 steps again if you want to reuse that means for each and every small functionality some small piece of the code which you want to implement so create the data transform separately and then all those data transform you can together add it into the parent to data transform so likewise so maximum limit to the up to the 20 steps and inline java is always a overhead in terms of maintenance so consequently consider using a data page or data transform if unavoidable use the rule utility function is rec recommended okay so even if required to use any of the java step so instead you create the rule utility function and then that you can use it over there and consider adding the comments to data transform for easier readability maintenance and potential reuse so always try to add the comments in the data transform if it is the activity at the step level we will be given the comments but if it is the data transform at the history level we will be given the comments so what is the main purpose of this data transform you clearly specify it so that tomorrow if someone wants to know why exactly you wrote this data transform it will, it will be useful for them and even if somebody wrote the data transform if you want to refer also it will be useful for you so always try to give the proper comments and even while doing the check-in also okay so once after doing any modification in the any data transform so while doing the check-in so you must give the proper check-in comments so that will be always helpful tomorrow if someone wants to see what exactly the changes you have done it so check-in comments is a mandatory and here one more thing so here if you see i am doing the last node by whom okay i am giving like raju or someone so in case if you want to assign this value to this property you can directly give the text still it will work it but you see it is saving but you are getting the complex okay and info warning okay one severe or moderate warning so why because if you see that review and edit see the source raju is ambiguous and he is being treated as a text so we don't know whether it is a variable or it is a text okay if it is a page and it, it uh, add it to the pages and classes tab so even if it is a page then we must specify that page in the pages and class so that is the reason why in case if you are assigning any text always give it in the double course so now if you save it that will be saved see there is no severe or moderate warning so this is must and should okay which we have to follow this and under most circumstances don't leave disabled steps in the data transform review and remove the disabled steps if they are not required so for example for testing purpose maybe i have added and i have disabled it okay but after that okay once the functionality is completed now while moving to the higher environments so just delete this step see now this step is disabled see this is grayed out this is grayed out okay so all the disabled steps must be deleted when you are moving to the higher environments 
So delete it like that. Are you sure? Submit. Yes. That's got deleted. So likewise, always remove the disabled steps, steps when you are moving to the higher environments. Now these are the decision table best practices. Specify the most likely outcome rows before you specify less likely outcome rows. Okay, most likely outcome rows first should be there and least one should be the last one. For example, here there is a one decision table. Okay, so based on this, the, this value, if the error clar, clar, classification is invalid inputs, it is going to return 400. Insufficient security 403. Timeout 408. Precondition file 412. So this is the last one which it is having like this. Okay, so what you have to do? In my application, most commonly returned value is the invalid inputs. So that should be the first one. That should be the first one. In case if this is the last one, what happened? So the PEGA always try to check one by one in the sequence. So first it will check insufficient security. No, this is not the value. So like this resource not found, method not found. Then if this invalid input is last, so it is going to check each and every condition and then only it is going to find the invalid input. So that is the reason why in your application, what are the values which should be occurred as part of this property that must be the first one. Okay, so that the time will be saved. And to avoid slow performance, limit your decision tables to no more than 300 to 500. So these decision conditions should be avoided more than 500 and that should be limited 3 to 500 only. So 500 conditions, if this decision table wants to check every time, it is going to take again lot of time. Okay. So as I told you, each and every thing which we are discussing may take minimum, okay, milliseconds only. But together all these milliseconds, it will take again seconds and sometimes minutes also. So that is, that is going to hugely impact the performance. So these are the decision table. Next to decision tree based practices. So don't redirect a rule to itself under circumstance value in the options field of the result tab. Avoid creating a circular set of redirections. That means A to B and B to A. So because this causes an exception at runtime. So always be cautious while referring the decision tree or decision table. For example, here I'm having one decision tree, which is the filter history. Okay, in the filter history, here if you see, if value is assignment routed, then call decision tree. Which one I'm calling? Again, filter tree. So currently in which decision tree I'm there? In the filter history. Again, you are giving filter history. So that means if this condition is assignment routed, again, it will go to filter history. So again, it will call the same filter history. Again, if the value is assignment routed, so it is going to be like an infinite loop. So always be cautious, okay, while referring the decision tree which you are using. So this is completely going to hang the application. Okay, it is going to completely hang the application. So be very cautious while calling the decision tree, inner decision tree, or else inner decision table which you are referring. Okay. So, because this causes the exception at runtime. And again, even for the decision tree also, to avoid slow performance, limit your decision tables to no more than 300 to 500. So, verifying these conditions should not be not more than 300 to 500. And this is the database best practice. So, don't use custom stored procedures to accomplish a task. So that means, so what we have to do in general for retrieving the data from DB, either we will be using the RDB methods, okay, otherwise report definitions, otherwise data pages, okay, we will be using to retrieve the data. Okay, so while using the RDB methods, okay, so you may think that it is easy to create the SQL query in the database and that query can be created as a stored procedure and that stored procedure can be called from the PEGA. So it is going to hugely impact the performance of the application. 
so try to avoid this calling the stored procedure and try to do the joins in report definitions in Tiga itself. Okay, as much as possible, try to create the report definition with the joins. Okay, otherwise create an association rule and that association rule you can use in the joins of the report definition. So which may not be impact the performance. So be careful while creating any of the rule. Okay, so and by following all these things, it is hugely impacting the performance improvement. Okay, and if you doesn't follow this also, your application obviously will work, but sometimes it is going to impact the performance and slowness. So I request to follow all these things. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you all. So see you in the next class with a different video. Bye-bye.